Search and Destroy is a classic Call of Duty game mode, similar to CSGO, Valorant, or Rainbow Six Siege, in which the player only has one life per round, so when you die, you're done. Each life makes a huge difference in Search, especially in Modern Warfare 2, where posting up and holding power points is the name of the game. But you already know what Search and Destroy is, and you know how it plays out. I'm here to discuss the worst part for some people. You aren't clutch. You aren't calm, you aren't composed, whatever the case may be. Most Call of Duty players struggle to make the correct decisions with time winding down and the numbers not on their side. On one hand, they'll either turtle up in their safety corner and not move, or they'll do the exact opposite, running around the map like a chicken with their head cut off and no general idea or direction. But one thing every Call of Duty pro will tell you is that having a strategy in your mind is the most important thing in this game. No, you don't have to literally plan out everything that you're going to do because obviously that won't work, but take a deep breath and think about what you can do. Whether it's a 1v1, 1v2, or 1v6, there's always options and always ways to outplay the opponent. In today's video, I'll be discussing with you my main tips on how to become a clutch search and destroy player. I personally have always loved being last alive, going back to when I was just a kid during the original Modern Warfare 2 days. I just love making plays that had people in all. What's going on guys, my name is Reddix, welcome to the channel. Thank you for over 10,000 subs, we're actually about to hit 12,000 subs, which is insane, it's amazing. Thank you guys for all the support, enjoy the video. This guy is actually dirty, dude. Be advised, UAV is exiting the game. Oh my lord. Dude, you feel you like it every time. You okay, are a dude. different breed. Tip one is to stay calm. Now this sounds easy, but actually doing it is the hard part. The first thing to do if you're one of those people who panics as soon as all their teammates die, just take a deep breath. Not like a figure of speech, but literally take a deep breath. Wiggle your fingers a bit, whatever you need to do to relax and lose those tight nerves you have. Me personally, I've played so much search that it rarely affects me anymore, but sometimes in a round 11 where I'm tasked with a 1v1 or worse, I definitely get some nerves. So what I do is breathe. I think about the info that I have and I remind myself mentally that I'm the best player in the lobby and this clutch should be easy for me. And now it may sound cocky to think that way, but I'd tell myself that even if I were playing a 1v4 against the Los Angeles Thieves. No, I'm not better than any of those guys, but I'll tell myself I am, and it always helps me loosen up 10 times out of 10. It allows me to get a little jolt of confidence and think clearly, and make the best decisions I can, which is the next tip, but for now let's focus on figuring out what works for you to keep a calm head. If you have no issues with this, then go ahead and skip to tip two, but for those who get nervous, let's quickly discuss why. Do you get nervous because everyone is watching you? Well, you need to realize they're watching you because they made the wrong decision that round and they died. Or are you nervous because if you don't clutch it, you're gonna lose some SR and you're gonna maybe go back a rank? Well, you could get that SR right back if you get a win next game. Is it because your positioning is bad? Well, that's on you, but don't worry, next tip will help with that. Just remember, any reason that you have to be nervous during a round 11 of search or being last alive, it's trivial. Whatever aspect of the situation has you nervous, just think of the opposite, like the examples that I gave you. Nervous because you just aren't good enough yet to pull off a 1v4? Relax, if you lose, you'll learn from it. You aren't supposed to win a 1v4, but if you stay calm, you might surprise yourself with the best clutch of your life. Tip number two is decision making. So after you've learned how to calm yourself down and think straight during high pressure situations, it's important that you still execute the proper game plan. Just because you're calm during a clutch situation doesn't mean that hoping for the best will magically work. You still have the odds stacked against you. So let's run through a few scenarios. 1v1. Now if your teammate just died, so now it's a 1v1 when you had a 2v1 advantage, you at least have some info on where the opponent is. Now this tip works no matter if it's a 1v1 or a 1v15. If your teammate just died, you should have at least a small amount of info on the enemy who killed them. If your teammate calls out the enemy's location, then go from there, but if the team isn't calling things out for you, check the kill feed first. They died to a Vaznev? Well then you might want to keep some distance as a long range fight might benefit you, and vice versa. Listen to where the gunshots came from that got your teammate. Look at where your teammate was when they died and where they could have been shot from. 
I mean, there is an incredible amount of information a player can gain from just paying attention to the small details of their teammate dying. So now again, a 1v1, your teammate just died, so you know where the enemy is. You also have to realize that the enemy probably has no info on you. They don't know where you are. Quickly think about what you can do to get a free line of sight on where the enemy may be, go somewhere that they'd least expect you to be, and make sure that you always have the advantage in every gunfight. Think two steps ahead. What can you do right now to get info or maybe even get a kill? And what will you do next? Why will you do that? You should have a reason for anything you decide to do on the map and in search and destroy, a lot of people don't have any reason for the routes they take, the sight lines they hold, etc. They just play and pray. And that's fine. But if you want to be a great player, start thinking of what you can do before you even do it. Tip number three is repositioning and staying unpredictable. Now the video is already getting a little long, so I'm going to speed up the last few tips, but this one is especially useful in a clutch situation where you're outnumbered. It's great in a 1v1 as well when the enemy has some sort of an idea of where you are, but in a 1 versus 2 or even worse, you're going to need to stay moving. If you're watching my video, you know exactly who Shotzi is, and there's a reason why he is still the movement king of Call of Duty, even in a game with basically no movement mechanics. See, movement has this bad stigma in gaming now, due to the YY screen shaking horrible aim having kids on YouTube, but that's not actually what movement is. In Modern Warfare 2, movement is as simple as a few tricks, and one of them is on the screen now. I have a full movement guide to utilizing the dive, slide, and the dolphin dive hop, so click that if you need it, but utilizing the dives is huge. You cover so much ground so quickly that if you're last alive and you need to cross somewhere that most likely has someone watching the lane, dive across it. One, they won't be able to gun you down quick enough, and two, they'll try to shoot you, which gives you more info on their location, and it also tells you that they're aware of where you are. So what's the guy that just saw you dive across gonna do? He's going to yell to his teammates that you just crossed this lane, and they're all going to focus their attention on that side of the map. But now, this is how you outsmart them. You got them to shoot, you know the enemies know that you went towards, for example, the A-bomb site. So now you can wait a second, and then dive back across and go the complete opposite way. So if you wait a little bit, odds are the enemy will stop watching this cross and start moving. So now, they're likely waiting for you on the entire wrong side of the map, meaning you can get a free plant on the other side and have a much better chance at clutching. Now, it's not always going to work or be as easy as it sounds, but it's one of my main go-to strategies into winning clutch situations, and it's the key to remember, repositioning. Piggybacking off of tip three is tip number four, acquire info. Going back to the last tip, I mentioned using dives to cross lanes, which can get enemies to shoot at you, when they won't actually be able to get the kill. This is used to gather the information, leading you to making your plays. But like I mentioned, one example is repositioning with the info that you've received. And that's crucial, as in a one versus two or worse, you need to catch the opponent off guard. So of course, you need to gather info in multiple ways. I also mentioned paying attention to your teammate's location, the kill feed, the audio cues that you get from enemies, you can also use stunts to check rooms. If you get a hit marker when you throw your stun in a room, then you know someone's in there. Although most people waste theirs and randomly chuck them around the map. If you don't use your spawn grenades also, you could use a frag or a semtex to get info on someone in a room that you may want to enter. If you toss your grenade in, it will force them to either run away, giving you a free kill, or they'll just have to eat the grenade, killing them or leaving them with little HP for a free kill. You can also use certain lines of sight that allow you to see multiple different focal points at once, like a cross to a bomb site, things like that. But I won't go on much further as this one's self-explanatory. Just gather your info and then use it wisely. Remember, the more things you pay attention to around the map, the more likely you are to come away with a big win. Now, tip number five is time management or letting the other team mess up. After this tip, we're gonna take a look at some gameplay breakdowns, but for now, when I'm playing with my friends and our team is getting rattled in a competitive search game, 
My go-to line, or you could even say my motto, is let them mess up. Now, I use different language, but you get the point. The reason you're watching this video is because you struggle to remain calm or make the right moves during a clutch moment of search and destroy. But guess what? They are probably just as nervous on the other team, but they've never watched a Reddick's guide to fixing it, so they're still terrified, and you're calm, cool, and collected. Okay, jokes aside, most players get very nervous in these moments and will have at least one or two momentary lapses in judgment. These will depend on offense or defense, but remember always that they have to plant if you're on defense. You do not need to be the guy in search and destroy running up and around the middle of the map on defense. Relax, lay back and let them run at you and win those easy gunfights. Now on offense, that's where the unpredictability tip is the most important. Constantly moving around the map, saving your dead silence for clutch moments, and catching the enemy off guard is key. This is where I want to add in time management which I'll show you some of my clips and I'll break them down here in just a moment, but it takes five seconds to plant and seven and a half seconds to defuse. If you have the bomb planted and no one's defusing it, don't run around looking for them. Don't sit somewhere obvious. Find a spot that no one would expect where you have eyes on the bomb. The last thing you want is a ninja defuse causing you to drop down a rank. Periodically check the bomb and remember that if there's under 15 seconds left and no one is defusing, you should not check the bomb until about 7 to 8 seconds left, as the enemy won't have time to kill you and defuse the bomb. Now let's break down some gameplay. Okay, so starting out with a public match, I'm now in a 1v4 and I know they're planting the bomb at A, and I also get naded so I know they're going to expect me to be one shot and chow, so I just pre-aim and get a free kill. From there, I know that wasn't the guy who planted the bomb, and I didn't see him cross over to green, so he could be behind the awning here. He actually jumps up over it. This guy's actually dirty, dude. Premium compliments from the randoms, and I appreciate it, but still two people left, and I have plenty of time. So I'm just going to be patient and listen. I pop my dead silence to make sure I hear their footsteps only. And from here, you can see, I just had to be patient and let him push me. And eventually he did. And now, take a look at where the bomb is planted. This tells me exactly where the last opponent is. Based on the placement of the bomb, I know he has to be watching it from the tunnel, so I just line up for a fight. Now for one in ranked. Now this one's my favorite. First I try for the easy wall bang through the middle. Now that I know no one's in the middle of the kitchen, there's multiple specific choke points. One is in the freezer. Check it first, easy kill. Now I hear him pushing me, so I just quickly turn around and take the free gunfight. That's why you don't push people when the bomb is planted. Now I have about three seconds to get a kill and defuse the bomb. I know that he's not in the freezer. I know he's not behind me. He has to be sitting in the close corner. So then I just line it up and you just got to get the kill quick enough. <laughs> Who's the best is just player in this lobby? Little tune is just better. Little tune is just better. Little oh just so there was an example of a 1v4 in pubs and a 1v3 it was in ranked but it was basically a 1v4 because the bomb was down i had like no time to work with it's actually one of my best clips in my opinion i'm now going to quickly do a live pull of the results from the last video's giveaway now i can't do a giveaway every single video but um in this one if you guys do want to shout out in the next video you know the drill just hit share copy the link and then comment down below letting me know that you shared the video you don't actually have to share it just clicking copy link is incredible important for my channel's growth the 434 total comments we're gonna go ahead and start the raffle and pick a winner now notice i have filter duplicate loser users turned off so that means you can mo comment multiple times for multiple entry that being said let's hit start and see who the winner is shared ps5 it is rick my boy rick uh, so Rick, what you have to do now is head to the comments down below or head to the description, excuse me, find my Twitter or my Instagram, whichever you prefer. Let me know um, that you've seen this and I'll get you $20 worth of Call of Duty points for PS5 for your Call of Duty account. Now, if Rick doesn't get back to me within the time span of my next video going live, I'll just draw a new winner until someone finally claims it. And then after someone claims it, I will do a new giveaway on a new video. I can't do a giveaway on every video because a lot of people probably wouldn't like that. So I'm going to save them for every other video, maybe every, you know, three or four videos just depends. But it's just I feel like I need to find a way to give back to you guys for supporting me so much. And this is the only thing I could think of. But if you have any better ideas down below for video ideas or ideas for how I can give back to you guys, let me know. I'm open to listening. Thank you guys for watching this far. And if you made it this far, comment down below OBJ to let me know. Just a way so I can see who actually watches all the way to the end. Whoever does, I will gladly give you a shout out in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Like if you haven't. Share the video, etc, etc. Thanks. I've been Reddix. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.